Ben, welcome back to the Time channel. Today, uh, our reaction recap number 12. 12 of them things. Uh, yeah, so if, you, if you're not familiar, this is where we kind of go back and look at the last 10 or so reactions we've done on the channel. We've expanded it in the past couple of weeks because there's been a lot of stuff we've been listening to. Um, yes. But we basically just go back, give updated thoughts, feelings, opinions, um, and just kind of do a recap of the last 10 or so weeks. Um, and then at the end, we will give you a look at our entire lists for the wheels and other things and a sneak peek on what's coming next because we got a jam-packed schedule this month. Indeed. So, yeah. But, yeah, we're just going to go back and talk about all these things. Right. Well, starting off, uh, I guess another note is that we always exclude the most recent uh, reaction. So we won't be talking mm -hmm. about Lobby Sifri's crying, laughing, loving, lying. Um, but we left off Adrian Lanker's last time. So we'll be starting with that one. So Killer. we're starting off with Bright Future by Adrian Lanker. What do you think? Yes, uh, it's fantastic. Um, I think we all really enjoyed this in the reaction. Uh, it got even better after the reaction. <laughs> yes. Um, it's got like such a fantastic blend of like easy listening tracks, hard hitting tracks. It has such a wide variety in it. Um, and it just sounds so good. Uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, like you have Real House as the opener, which is one of my favorites. It's just like super depressing and slow. But then you have something like Free Treasure and Vampire Empire, which are just completely different vibes. Um, mm -hmm. The playing is incredible. Her vocals are still just fantastic. I, she has such a unique voice and it kind of like harkens back to like older folk stuff which i really really enjoy um her songwriting is also like really crazy good um she has a lot of like fun experiments on here too with the i think cell phone says is a very quirked up um evil is also very quirked up you <laughs> should not be able to get away with that but she does it so well um but yeah this is one of the best records this year um i think when it comes to favorite tracks i go back to Sadness as a Gift, Free Treasure, No Machine, uh, Donut Seam, and Vampire Empire the most, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, this thing is fantastic. Have you heard the Big Thief version of Vampire Empire? I have. I like the solo version better. Okay. I was going to ask, because I don't think I mm -hmm. have, uh, because I love that version of Vampi Vampire Empire on Bright mm -hmm. Future. Um, but yeah, I am going to agree with you. This has only gotten better with time. I think as of right now, this is my album of the year. Um, I don't know if that's going to change. It might, because we have a lot of good stuff coming out this month. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. But I really love that Adrian Lanker really kind of took folk back to its roots um, with that kind of like, you know, folk was kind of born out of the same area and, and region that like country was in and so bringing those country elements back into folk while she wasn't the first to do it i think it was done really really well here um sadness as a gift is maybe my favorite song uh to come out of this decade so far it is so good mm. um i don't know if i can properly describe it using words how much i love that song but yeah, this whole album is is just phenomenal. Uh, I'm definitely interested to see some more of her solo stuff. I am. Mm -hmm. I still haven't listened to very much Big Thief, just the Dragon New Warm Mountain. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely interested. Maybe we'll do some more of her stuff on the channel soon. Mm -hmm. I, I have heard some songs off of Abyss Kiss from 2018 because they okay. just kind of start playing after some of the albums I've been listening to and they sound great. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the like late night performances of a lot of these songs on this record, her voice is exactly the same as the mixes on the the, the actual record. It's kind of scary. <laughs> oh, really? But those are all those are great performances. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen that. Is that just on YouTube or something? Yeah, they just kind of like randomly pop up. I think it was like one is with like Seth Meyers and one is uh, Stephen oh, Colbert, probably. Gotcha. Colbert always has all the good people on. Gotcha, gotcha. I didn't, for some reason, I didn't make the connection that you were talking about late night TV. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> is that like a, one of those like Spotify sessions or something? No. Um, okay. You should do a Spotify session, so that'd be nice. They should. Those are my favorite things. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. 
we'll move on. Uh, we got another kind of slower folk album. We, we got, got a lot of these. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of them. Uh, another new release. We listened to Lizzie McAlpine's Older. What do you think? I haven't listened to it too much I since we've either. reacted to it. Um, <laughs> I think there's a lot of stuff coming out this year. Um, I don't think my opinions have changed too much on it. I've listened to some of the songs again to get ready for this. Um, I think my opinions are pretty much the same. Uh, it's very like solid. Like there's nothing to kind of laugh at here. It's a very solid release, and I think it's her best that I've heard. Like the the vast improvement over "Give Me a Minute" here was was really fun to see. Um, I, I still think there are. I, it's problems with me. Like, I think there's certain similarities that are too similar to a lot of her contemporaries. I think she is starting to carve her own lane and her own style. Like, I think the last, through track 10 through 14, I think I was hearing, like, something more unique from her that I was really enjoying because I think, like, older March and Vortex are the best songs here. Yeah. Um, but I, I just took some issue with, like, some of them being a little too samey. I love the subject matter and the songwriting she's getting into here. It's just, like, stylistically, I'm not getting... What I would like, I mean, like, we just talked about the Adrian Lenker album and just, like, the variety and just the retroness, but just, like, how quirked up some of those songs were. It was just really great. Here, I feel like it's she's still a pop artist making folk music, and I think that mm -hmm. essentially comes out in tracks where, like, there's builds or string sections and the mix just gets overblown. It's not... There's no dynamic range in a lot of these tracks. It's very flat, and I think when it comes to folk music... I want to hear the guitar picking. I want to hear all of these like fantastic natural elements that you get from it. And I just wasn't getting that level of it here. Sure. Um, but still a very solid release. It's it's still one of the better folk records that come out this year. And I think something like Older is definitely one of the best tracks to come out this year still. So uh, I forgot I was giving ratings on these. I usually do that. I mix, missed that on the last one. So Oops. Adrian Lanker was a 90. This one I gave a 78. That's fair. Uh, yes. I think I'm in the same boat as you. Um, this, I think it was maybe a victim of when we recorded it uh, mm -hmm. because I was still get listening to Adrian Lanker when we did yeah. the reaction to this. And then right as like I might have gone back to it, we listened to Bon Iver's For Emma Forever Go. And then that kind of yeah, consumed my life. Um, so I think it just was like unfortunate timing. I have gone back over the last couple of days or so, um, and I am still digging a lot of the songs on here. Um, I will say, when it comes to Lizzie's stuff in the past, I usually give it one listen, and then I'm like, that was pretty good. And then I don't think about it for two months, and then I come back, and I'm like, wow, that was like way better than I thought it was going mm -hmm. to be. That wave hasn't quite hit me yet. I'm sure it will. Um, but there is a lot of good stuff on here. Um, I really love the song Older. Uh, that might be Lizzie's best song. And I I don't know. I'm still following her. I, I still really like her arc. Uh, maybe we'll do five seconds flat on the channel sometime because mm -hmm. it is interesting. There's a lot of yeah. different changes, and I think you would probably appreciate it more than the other two albums that we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Maybe. Yeah. She is still like a rising artist and I feel like she's about to hit her apex when she like releases like a really, really, really good album. Like yes. I, I can see it. It's just not here yet. We're on the verge. I think yes. I think her last album was like she hit a little bit of steam with Give Me a Minute, tried to make a kind of pop folk album, like a lot of features featuring pop people. And then this one was like bringing it back. And so now it's like, okay, where do you go from here? I yep. am very interested to see. Um, but I just haven't listened to this project a whole lot, unfortunately. But very, very good. There's always one in these reactions that just gets glossed over just because it's sandwiched between two things. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I feel like there was a lot of that on this mm -hmm. cycle. But still very good. I just need to listen to it more. Yes, sir. But... As previously mentioned, next was for Emma forever ago. Um, I feel like I don't know if you have much to say, just because that you've been listening yeah. to this one for years, and I don't know if mm -hmm. a couple months has really changed your opinion on it. No, no, <laughs> it's it's still one of the best albums of all time, and it's actually like a little bit better than I thought it was because 
being able to sit down and read the lyrics and fully give it full attention and reaction was uh, needed. Um, but yeah, it's still one of the most influential folk albums, especially like considering the folk landscape of more hushed vocals and intimate production. Mm. Like this is one of the earliest like inspiration points for like Phoebe Bridgers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, all the songs are absolutely fantastic. The writing is heart crushing and beautiful and fantastic. Uh, Stax is one of the best songs ever made. That's probably in like the te top 10 songs ever made if I were to do a playlist or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's a 98. It's phenomenal. We're doing the whole Bon Iver discography, so we can do a whole ranking of that eventually once that's over and gone. But yeah, it's phenomenal. Yes, yes. Uh, big agree. I think this one was one I was really anxious to listen to, and it really didn't disappoint. Uh, and I would agree. I think Restax is easily top 10, mm -hmm. maybe even top five. It is that mm -hmm. good. It has been in constant rotation since this reaction, which was in April. So, you know, three months or so I've been listening to it straight. It is phenomenal. I will say, I think I do prefer Bon Iver, Bon Iver over uh, for Emma just as, as a whole. I think that there is a little bit of a lull after Blindsided, the like Creature Fear team for Emma. I'm not such a big fan of that run. I like for Emma, but Creature Fear and team, not quite my speed. But I think everything surrounding that is just phenomenal work, especially considering that it was just a dude in a cabin. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of resources and somehow turned out one of the best folk projects of all time. So. Yeah, it definitely deserves its status as, like, must-listen folk. And I'm glad I finally got to listen to it. So, yes, big win. All right, after that, we took a little bit of a left turn. Uh, we did... <laughs> I needed one. We just had three folk records. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, next was Gorilla's Plastic Beach. Yes, sir. Um, this thing is fantastic. Uh, it's one of the best concept albums I've heard in a long time. I think it sticks to the concept like almost too much. Um, I feel like there's a couple of songs I play outside and like in a playlist, but when I like want this sound, I'm going to listen to the whole record and I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I, I think it just like perfectly just grasps the concept and just explores every single angle of it while being super fun, uh, but also serious and depressing and talking about some really great subject matter. Um, it's just really quirked up. I love it. It's I think it's a little bit slow to get into. I don't think it's until Rhinestone Eyes where like it really starts clicking for me because there's a lot of kind of intro and build up to like this whole concept. Um, but once you hit Rhinestone Eyes through the entire record, it's just a blast. Um, I think Emp Empire Ants and On Melancholy Hill are my like clear fla favorites here. They're mm -hmm. just so fantastic. I think On Melancholy Hill is still hits as hard as it did the first time I listened to it. Um, but even like to binge with little dragon is fantastic sweepstakes with most deaf was such a surprise and weird and funky but it's just so well done um yes. bobby womack heals it on cloud of unknowing as well that is mm. just a fantastic track um but yeah it's really fantastic it's it's just such a fun and creative listening experience um that i, I go back to every once in a while i feel like it's an album that doesn't require you to be listening to it constantly but it, it, if you want to get into the world of the plastic beach just dive right in and the whole album is just like it's such a ride for an hour but yes it's fantastic i love it um i gave this one a 94 uh i forgot it for emma again for emma is 98 it's so close to 100 you said uh, it plastic beach time. is a 94 did i okay yes cool. uh yeah i think i would agree plastic beach is really really solid i think i got a little bit nervous when you said that the guy from the gorillas is the guy from blur and i'm like uh-oh uh not that <laughs> Completely i completely different <laughs> it's very different not that yeah. i didn't like blur but it's like i don't want to upset people really mm -hmm. uh so i'm like oh no i don't want to have to say anything negative but i really don't have anything negative to say about this project it's really really solid really diverse. I think we got to it like right at the perfect time, like right before summer started, because this is like a perfect kind of summer album, even though it's touching on a bunch of like big themes, like environmental concerns or whatever, and over consumerism. It's like, it's pretty fun record. 
and there's yeah. a lot of like funny bits and like lighter elements that keep it going this isn't like uh if you played it at like a barbecue or anything i don't think people would like raise too many eyebrows um even though it's like if you're really listening it's like oh i don't oh, this isn't fun at all uh, but I, I do really really like it it's one that i haven't spent a whole lot of time with after the reaction but it's one that i admire a lot so i probably will go back to it at some point um, and the songs that I've listened to over the last week or so that are from this project were way better than I remember. So I think it does deserve some more attention. But yeah, very, very good. Yes, so. Next up is Slow Pulp Yard. Yard. Um, yeah, th this is one again where it's like, I don't know if my thoughts have changed too much, surprisingly. I think a lot of these indie rock albums grow on me a lot. This one pretty much stayed the same, meaning that it is good, but it did not grow to that snail mail level of obsession where I have to like run it back again and again and again. Sure. Um, but I, I think a couple of tracks on here definitely kind of become really, really good for me. I think the whole back half of the record is my favorite by far, but I think Mud, Broadview, and Fishes, and then the title track have been like my favorites that I go back to. Um, I do love the mixture of like more alternative rock and a little bit of grunge, a little bit of noise, but I also like the strip backed elements. Um, but it's a very solid record. I don't have too much to say about it. I think it's very much like, here's the album, take it in. It's not anything groundbreaking, but it's like really, really, really solid indie rock. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely interested in doing movies um, whenever that time is right, um, because I, I am very interested in this group and I don't know. It's it's still a nice change of pace for indie rock. I feel like everything is turning into indie folk like nowadays. Yeah. And I'm like, I want that more grungy alternative like angle of it still. Like I think Soccer Mommy's last record did that the best. Um, yeah. And I, I just want more of that. I, I love indie folk, but like it, there's so much happening in that genre right now where I like something with a little bit more of a backbone like this sometimes. But sure. yeah, I gave this one an 81. Very solid. Yeah. I don't think that this is necessarily like pushing the envelope at all, but I think in terms of what it's doing, it's some of the best that's doing it. And I would agree. Indie folk is a little bit crowded right now. Um, you have a lot of people doing it and a lot of people doing it very well, but man, indie rock is where it's at. This stuff slaps mm -hmm. so hard. Um, especially songs like, like slugs or yard or even something like Broadview or Mud. Some of those songs are fantastic. I love this album very, very much. Very interested to see where they go from here because this album, I would say it's pretty similar to movies, but movies is definitely more acclaimed. I think mm -hmm. more people know about that one, um, especially songs like New Horse or Falling Apart, which were semi-hits. Um, so we might do movies at some point. I would be yeah. down. Uh, I feel like I've heard half the songs on that record, but I haven't like listened, listened to them. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense. Um, but I think movies, I don't know. I don't know. It's shorter and there are some songs that are like kind of nothings, but mm -hmm. um, still We can worth... put it on the small wheel. We I think it is. Wheel. I think it is on is the okay. small wheel. Good. <laughs> um, so we might do it at some point, but yeah, I'm more interested to see where they go from here. Mm -hmm. Don't don't go indie folk, slow pulp, which I don't think they are going to. Uh, it doesn't seem like they would, but they, they released that "Hanging by a Moment" cover, and that was oh, not yeah. folky at all. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, big win, slow pulp. After that. Uh, another big change of pace. We listened to System of a Down's Toxicity. Yes. Uh, this was the first off of the things I've listened to already, Wheel, but to share with the class. And of course, we got Toxicity first. Um, yeah, it's still incredible. I, I don't think I have any changed thoughts on this. I think it is one of my favorite metal records, if not my favorite metal record of all time. Um, it goes so ridiculously hard. I love the fast switch ups between like politically conscious and funny and all of just the the vocals on it are incredible. Surge is just a powerful front man. The riffs on this thing are addictive. Um, yeah, it, it's a 
it's a great ride of a record. Every single song is pretty fantastic. Um, yeah, what is there to say about Toxicity that hasn't already been said? Um, I think I was struggling to find things to say about it in the reaction at some points. Yeah. Um, but it is just such a all-encompassing listen, whether you're going in for just like the hardest riffs of all time or you're digging into lyrics or you're doing any of that. Uh, it's just a fantastic record. So it's a 97. It's a classic. Yes, I would agree. Uh, I'm not someone that really listens to metal at all. Um, I really don't like the screamy stuff, the screamy vocals. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I didn't really know much about this album going in. Um, I really I didn't kept know. it that way intentionally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I knew Chop Suey, but I think that was pretty mm. much it. Um, but yeah, man, this stuff really slaps. I'm not in the mood for it often, but when I was listening to this winning playlist and, uh, well, first of all, it was such a, a change of pace. Yeah. <laughs> when I was like, <laughs> you know, it would go from like flume to sadness as a gift and to like, you know, ATWA or something. And it's like, <laughs> whoa, okay. Uh, and it was kind of shocking. But then like once that initial shock wore off, it was like, man, this is really, really good. Um, it scratches that itch for like harder stuff that like I rarely have, but then mm. when I'm listening to it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is the jam. I love this. Um, so yeah, that was a big win. I'd be down to do some more. Well, I don't know how much, I know they only have like a couple records. They um, do, but they're all pretty solid. Yeah. And, or I'd be down to do Rage Against the Machine. I know that that one, you did a little bit yeah. of a deep dive into them. Mm -hmm. and I'd be down to do that. I think you'd enjoy that quite a bit. I do have, I think they're self-titled on my my wheel of things that to show you. So okay, that would be a fun one. That would, that would. So maybe, maybe for all of the boy time Even metal hits. Yes, the two of you out there. Yeah, yeah we just never like, camera. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but after that. We listen to Why Does the Earth Give Us People to Love by Kara Jackson. Yes, uh, um, yeah, this was going in not knowing what to really expect, except that people do go crazy for it if they know about it. I think this thing is severely underrated still. Yes. Um, but yeah, I did not know what to go, like, think about going in. This is her debut record, which is absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. um, the songwriting on this is really phenomenal. Uh, everything about it seems so composed and mature coming from someone who's literally, this is their first record. Um, I know she was a poet, um, mm -hmm. still is obviously, but that's kind of her background going into this. Um, and it definitely shows, I think the backdrop for a lot of these tracks was perfect for that. We have a little bit of country twang coming in. We have a little bit of that more free flowing, ethereal kind of folk sound that like people like wise blood has been doing. Mm. Um, and it's perfect. Like, and I love the storytelling on all of these. I think, um, rat has, fantastic story along with that um i yes. think curtains is or the title track and curtains also kind of have these just like fantastic story elements that just draw you in so much i think that was the main thing i took away from this record is just the storytelling on it is so personal and fantastic and it covers such a wide range of topics um and yeah it's a joy to listen to everything is just so detailed and textured and the tracks all flow really well um it's not one I go back to too often. I feel like it's very dense to kind of listen to on a daily basis. There's a couple tracks, like I think um, Brain and Lily have been in my playlist quite a bit. Those mm. two are like very easy listening, have more of that country twang to it that I really like. Um, but yeah, if, if you need like a sit down record, that's more like a Joanna Newsom, Fiona Apple folk where it is very wordy and complex. Like this is a great album to check out and you should not miss it because it is really fantastic. And I'm just going to ride or die for her at this point because this yeah. thing should be like super popular and it's not. <laughs> so yeah, it's fantastic though. I gave it a 89. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is very, very good uh, assumption or assessment of it. Uh, I think it's very unique. You know, I, we just talked about lobby Sifri last, mm -hmm. last time. Um, but I think it's, it's kind of amazing how few like black artists are in folk. Like mm -hmm. it's a, it's a scene very dominated by white people, um, which is unfortunate, but I think that this album is so unique and like her voice is so interesting. It has that like gruff, soulful texture to it, which is so unique, 
because uh, I feel like most soul or folk people are, you know, they have those like silky smooth voices. Unless it's someone like Dylan or Young or something where it's right. like the complete opposite side. Mm -hmm. This is a nice kind of mix where you're getting this unique texture, but you're not sacrificing technique to get it. Um, and I also think that her writing is maybe some of the best in the biz. Uh, I think that my heart still belongs to Lucy Day Dacus. I think that her writing is <laughs> so intensely personal and it clicks uh, effortlessly with me. But I think Kara Jackson might might be up there with her because, mm -hmm. man, it is it is phenomenal what she is able to achieve on this record. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. I think more people should be listening to this. I understand why it isn't as popular as like a Lucy Dacus because it is heady and different. And like you said, mm -hmm. it isn't something that you want to listen to every day, but more people should know about it and listen to it. So with time, I'm sure. Yeah. I think it'll get there. Hopefully, but we can just do our part, I guess. Exactly. And if she has a new album, we'll listen to it. So yes. Yes. Very, very good record. Uh, next up is Lives Outgrown by Beth Gibbons. Yes, sir. Uh, another one of the best records of this year. Um, again, not knowing what to expect with this thing. We listened to Dummy earlier this year. That was straight hip hop or trip hop 90s, like UK stuff. So obviously there's a certain sonic palette here. I wasn't sure what she was going to do because this is her first solo record in like 24 years or 25 years or whatever it's been. Yeah. Um, but what we got here was really incredible. Like I'm loving, cause again, another folk centered record. I, I think doing so much folk, we're learning complexities in different areas of the genre and it's getting really more like a lot interesting. And I feel like we're clinging to things that we wouldn't normally if we did, weren't like this deep into the genre, wow. um, because this is a completely different flavor of folk than a lot of the other stuff we've been doing. Um, you know, we have these elements of like kraut rock and stuff like this entering here. Like the production on this is a lot more maximal than it is on a lot of the other folk records we've been doing. And I think it works. Her voice has aged so well. Um, she hits this really, really nice, like timbre that I really love in this kind of music. It's eerie, it's mysterious. Um, but it's also just like breathtakingly gorgeous on a lot of these tracks. Um, I think my favorite track is actually whispering love, which is the outro. That's the one I go back to the most. The instrumental on that track is just so gorgeous. The flutes on it are fantastic. Um, but also like Beyond the Sun and Rewind are also amazing. I love the crowd rock on Rewind. It is just like straight out of a Swans album. I love it. Um, but yeah, such a wide array of things on here as well. It's just like the, the sonic palettes on this are the standout. It's just so, so cool of an atmosphere to dig into. Um, but yeah, it is... It feels like it was made by a veteran that's been in the industry for decades, and it truly is. It's fantastic. I think I have it at a 90 right next to Bright Future. I think they're both equally fantastic in two completely different ways in the same genre. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, fantastic. I would agree. I think that this is also very, very good. It's one that I haven't listened to a whole lot. Um, but, yeah, going back to what you were saying about, like, we kind of get folk at this point. Um, I think it's interesting that like folk kind of maybe gets pinholed into like kind of being one thing when mm -hmm. it really can be pretty much anything. I think I think it has a lot of similarities to like funk where like people think of funk where it's like, oh, you know, they're wearing shiny pants and getting like down and groovy. But then like you listen. To, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, then you listen to like maggot brain and it's like so mm -hmm. dark and like gross um, while still being funky. Um, I think folk is very kind of similar to that, where you can do something like Bon Iver or Adrian Lanker kind of stripped back more acoustic stuff, or you can go the complete opposite direction with Beth Gibbons and have these crazy string sections and have it sound so dark and, and depressing. Um, it's very, very well done. Um, I don't know if I'll like go back to it a whole lot just because... Um, I don't know. I'm kind of intimidated by it. And, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I might go back to it at one point, but like, as of right now, it's like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. 
but very, very good and very well done. Just might not be my speed for now. So who knows? Is up. Listen to the podcast. If I go back to it, I'll talk about it there. Mm -hmm. All right. After that was Bon Iver, Bon Iver by Bon Iver. Correct. <laughs> Second in our Bon Iver series. Yes. Third will be coming soon. Um, yeah, this is the self-titled 2011, completely different Sonic palette. Uh, for Emma, was incredibly stripped back. This one, we're seeing a lot more of a fleshed out image in terms of atmosphere. Um, I think the attitude on this record is completely different as well. Um, that's something we'll see across this whole discography is just like these reinventions, like every single record, which I do enjoy because the music is always great. Um, but yeah, this record for me was the first Bon Iver record I've listened to. I've been listening to it for about like 10 years now at this point. Um, and I think just the, the sonic palettes on here, just like the atmosphere, like it feels so home to me that it's hard to even talk about the record because it just feels like it just lives on its own. And I've always kind of heard these songs and think of places and feelings. And that's what the record's mainly about. So, it, but it, it is gorgeous. It was, this was the hardest record to ever to like react to on this channel, I think, just because like I've heard it so much. It was so hard to like form feelings around these songs that I've heard for years. Um, but I think Minnesota, Wisconsin, Holocene, Beth Rest, uh, Calgary, all of these are just phenomenal. It's just such a good sounding record. It just reminds like of home, like this area that I live in. There's not a lot of things that do that for Midwest people. Like there's not really albums that kind of sound like that. Um, and I think this record has that unique balance that gets struck with this one because it just sounds like home. Um, yeah. But yeah, another fantastic entry into the catalog for him. Um, and I gave it a 93, bumped it up a little bit again. Oh, so you prefer Emma over this? I think Emma's a better record. Um, okay. But again, with Bon Iver, it switches every single time I listen to an album. I'm like, this is his best record. Sure. <laughs> but I think Emma's a little bit more consistent than this. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I would probably agree. Um, even though I did say there was a little bit of a slump in the middle there for, for Emma for me, I think mm -hmm. that like the, the bookends of this album are like phenomenal. Um, yeah. like Perth through towers and then like Calgary through Beth rest are like great, great, great. The middle is like, okay, but it isn't like, those aren't my favorites by any means. Mm -hmm. And I want to shout out, there was a comment that said that they thought that Towers was the best song. And I'm I'm not going to go that far, but I do really, really like Towers. Um, I think that it's like those first four tracks, it might be a perfect run. It might be giving Anderson Pax Ventura a run for its money in terms mm -hmm. of like the best openers of or like the first four or five tracks or whatever. Um, man, yeah. I think Perth is maybe not as good an intro as Flume, but I think it is also really, really good. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Holocene, obviously. And then Towers is really fun, like soft rock. So, which is a genre I love. And then Beth Rest is phenomenal. Uh, Gorgeous. Yes. I, I, I need to listen to 20 to a Million just to hear another outro, pretty much, because, man, he knocks those out of the park. I will say it's a lot more subtle, but it... It, with time, it will stand up the other two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited. Uh, but yeah, another great, great album. I already, I just ordered Bon Iver, Bon Iver vinyl yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the train. I'm very excited. And He's we, got good packaging too. The, the, the quality of everything in the vinyl is so good. Well, that's good. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, very good. We'll be doing 22 a million in a couple weeks. So stay mm -hmm. tuned and you'll figure out what our schedule is going to be after the last two albums. But speaking of, one we did after that was Sade's Love Deluxe. Boy. Oh, this thing is so good. <laughs> yes. It's so good. Um yeah, I think first reaction was like, this is gorgeous, but then you listen to it more and more and it just grows so much. It's just like one of the best sounding albums in general that I've listened to. It is so smooth and everything is just so well placed. 
Um, no Ordinary Love is still fantastic. It's such a, like, one of the best openers I've heard in a long time. Um, just taking its time building and everything. This this whole album is just like, it's a push and pull, but everything is just smooth within it. Her vocals are fantastic. She has such a good range. Um, I, I think especially, like, with the first track, keeping it a very, like, she's not using, like, she's not pushing her voice at all. It, it's very laid back, and, like, it just builds with the track. Kiss of Life is amazing. I think I we point we both loved Kiss of Life in the reaction, but it might actually be the best song here. Uh, that it's just the saxophone comes in exactly when it needs to. Everything just falls into place beautifully. Um, yeah, I was listening to the the MF Doom song that sampled that song, and I had to go back to it and just be like, oh my god, it's so good. Um, and then I think Mermaid, the the the, the closer, is just yes. a perfect send off as well. I I am always a fan of outros for like being instrumentals um because i think especially with this record too it like it's it's exploring more areas that the band can do without any vocal tracks just this underwater feel and like just this such a quiet soft letdown to this record is just so great um but yeah i can't say enough good things about this i i think this like rivals d'angelo's voodoo for like my favorite r&b like soul record of all time it's like mm. that good um but yeah, I'm interested in doing more Sade. I, th I think there's definitely some other records of hers that we could do. Um, Absolutely. I know, yeah, Diamond Life, Promise, even Lovers Rock, I think are all also like in the same conversation in this record. So that might be something in the future. But I give this 94. It's phenomenal. Yes. Yes. I will say that, unfortunately, this is probably the album I've gone back to the least, Justin, mm -hmm. because it, it's one that we did pretty recently. Um but man, I was listening to this album again. I threw it on today. Holy moly, this is so, so, so good. Yeah. Um, I need to give it more attention. But yeah, I don't want to repeat everything that you said, but I do want to like highlight that like we've gotten a lot of like R&B stuff recently where the albums are way too bloated. Yes. <laughs> Nine tracks. And that's all you get. And every single one feels like it's intentional. And it's mm -hmm. like, there's a reason it's here. And it like nothing is a retread of something that's already happened. It's all, it's like a perfect record in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and man, her voice, so good. Uh, the band surrounding it, obviously. Like the production is also like weird and different and like very distinct from other R&B that we've listened to in this area. I would say it's probably my favorite 90s R&B album. I I I don't I can't think of anything else that's better. All so, the ropes the only one that borders that and everything else is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, very very good. I need to listen to it more. But yes sir. That's my bad. All right, our last album was the Anderson Pac Knowledge No Worries album. Why, Lod? This one's also very good. Yes. Um, <laughs> this is the easy listening that I was like looking for to strike a balance in my listening habits lately. I, I needed something sunny like this, and it, it's really, really fantastic. I think both Knowledge and Anderson like equally contribute here because the production is just as good as the vocals. Um, I, I think the the sequencing of this record is one of my favorites of the year. I love all the transitions and everything between tracks. It ends up feeling more like a beat tape at certain points than like a rap record, which I think is great. Um, the the production style is very much like we have a palette of you know these string sections and guitar parts and stuff like that, but they're all varied enough where it doesn't get too lost. Where it's like, what track is this again? Right. Um, I, I think the features do really well. Um, I think Thundercat kills it on his feature. Uh, Earl Sweatshirt does fantastic on his. Um, yeah, it, it's a really, really fun record. I, I have not, I've like skimmed through the first record that they put out, but I haven't like fully listened to it, but this just sounds really, really great. Mm. Um, this is exactly what I wanted from Anderson Pack at this point. I've been dying for like a more solo project of his. And I think this record definitely shows his range a lot more than Silk Sonic did. I think yeah. Silk Sonic was a cool, cohesive little project, but Anderson Pack can do so much more than that. And I think this record showcases it. Um, he's got that charisma. He's got that wit. He's got the vocals to back everything up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think favorite tracks, I think Keeper with Thundercat, Distractions, uh, Daydreaming, um, Do She Used, and Walk On By. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, I'm right there with you. I've been also wanting another Anderson solo project, um, and I think that this scratches that itch mm-hmm. for sure. Um, I think that, yeah, it's, it's a perfect summer record. I haven't spent a whole lot of time with it. I mean, we it only came out like a couple weeks ago. Um, but man, when I have listened to it, I have like been so impressed and like, man, I've missed this Anderson so much. Um, I, I know we need to do, what is it? Is it, Ven- no, not Ventura. Oxnard. Oxnard. That's yeah. the one. Like which, which street is it in LA? It's, it's one of them. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I think the only bad thing I have to say about this album is that Dave Chappelle's on it when Snoop Dogg is right there. That's, exactly. that's literally, they're doing the same thing. And I'm like, just yeah. get Snoop on the intro. Cause Snoop Nobody is, wants to hear Dave Chappelle. No. And also like Snoop is really funny too. If you want to yeah. like a comedian, Snoop is hilarious. I, I don't know. I don't know, but very, very good. I'm very mm-hmm. glad that this came out and I'm glad that like Silk Sonic didn't completely change him and he's like, oh, well, this was super successful. Yes. Yep. I'm going to just stay in that lane. Like this is mm-hmm. a complete return, I guess maybe a return to form, but also just like switching it up again, which is mm-hmm. just great to see. So big win. And that's it. That's all that we have done. We're not going to talk about Lobby Sifri's laughing, crying, laughing, loving. Love. Crying, lo- crying, laughing, loving, lying. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Too many <laughs> words. It's too uh, many. Um, but yeah, I think overall the cycle was pretty G-dang good. Maybe yeah. a little bit too much folk. We're trying to, well, I'm trying to fix it a little bit. We'll see. Um, that's yeah. why we're doing seven swans for the next wheel fit. Oops, that's oops, fine. that's fine. Um, but yeah, we'll throw up our wheels right now. Yeah, ah. we'll look at those. Aren't those nice? Uh, everything we have on there. Um, fan wheel is still probably going to be in the back burner for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have been taking suggestions though and adding them to our wheels. I know I have done yep. that and I know that you have too. So keep dropping those suggestions because we're still checking them out. But we just aren't going to spin a wheel of 200 things on it. And, yeah. Uh, There's too much new stuff coming out on top of everything else we want to do that it's getting like too crowded to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Especially since we're just doing one video a week, it it's makes time. it very difficult to get through everything we want to. Mm -hmm. So there's that, but I know that you stuck around specifically to hear our upcoming schedule. So here it is. Uh, Next week, we are going to be doing Claro's new record. I should have Mm -hmm. looked up the name of it, but Uh, it's it's out there somewhere. It's, um, it's, um, it's, um, (laughs) Charm. Okay. Charm. We're going to be doing Charm by Claro after that. We're doing 22 a million, Pony Bear. Mm-hmm. After that, we're doing the Porter Robinson record, Smile. Smile. Smile XD, or is it Colon Happy D? Days. Colon D, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're doing Worked the new Porter Robinson, Bab Jabs. I'll try to get Bab Jab for that. Yeah. It's going to be good. Uh, the Clara one might be live, which will be fun. That's true. We'll see if we can figure that out. I think we will. And then after that, we're going to be doing Seven Swans. So we got a lot of new stuff. We're keeping with our Bon Iver series in July. And then starting up again with our lists in August. So yes, sir. that's what we'll be we got. banning folk from the channel until we don't. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what I see what we <laughs> land on after Seven Swans. Yeah. Um, we'll also see what comes up after that because... Uh, there might be some new albums coming out in August. That we yeah, don't know. We're about. halfway through the year and it's already stacked. So I'm sure there's going to be more in the last half of the year. <laughs> yes. I'm sure there will be too. Uh, but yeah, that's what we got. That's it for this video. Yes, so. Thank you for tuning in to another reaction retrospective. Uh, we have a podcast if you want to listen to it, it's on our second channel. And also on anywhere you would find your 
podcast. Uh, Easer. We, if you want to put it on there, you can. <laughs> we aren't on Rumble, unfortunately. I don't know what I need to do to get Darn. on. Darn. Um, hopefully, I'll say a slur or something. Well, we, do we have to be invited by Doctor Rumble or whatever? <laughs> I think we had to have like done something abysmally wrong so that they'll contact us. Oh, okay. They don't have a good track record over there. We have to be deplatformed in order to get on yeah. there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that hasn't happened yet. Um, not yet. It or will one bad soon. takeaway from it. Well, yes, yeah. that's, that's true. We're right on the edge. <laughs> We're so controversial. We're the we're the Logan Paul of Z tier reaction YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I think we bumped up to like you know F tier at this point. Oh, we're in F tier. We're getting there. Okay, good. That's a lot of letters that we are just cruising on by. We we got a reaction with twenty five thousand views, so we're not like nobody. That's true. We're, we're just, just only some. We're close. <laughs> <laughs> we're close to nobody, which is nice. Uh, I enjoy that. Yeah, I think so. I like our level of uh, mm-hmm. of internet celebrity. Yes. But that's it. Adios. <laughs>